Hi everyone, my name is Suzanne and I'm a Chinese metaphysics master in Hong Kong. Today I continue my series on Sun Tzu's Art of War and we are looking specifically at stratagem number 22. Now Sun Tzu's Art of War, for those who are new to this, uh, was written way, way back uh, for the emperor in an attempt to help him overcome enemy uh, on an actual enemies on an actual battlefield uh, when fighting an enemy army. Now, today we're not doing this on a day to day basis, hopefully, but we use um, we need to use strategies to overcome opposition and competition in the marketplace, especially if you are a business owner, you always want to have one leg up over your competitor. Now, this also applies for those who do not own a business. Um, if you are in a career and you want to advance in your career, obviously there are other people who are vying for the same job that you are uh, that you want. So you always need to be one step ahead, and this is why we are still today using Sunza's Art of War to help us get ahead of the competition. Now um, there are altogether thirty six stratagems, as they are called. Um, today's terminology is a little bit easier, strategies. So there are 36 strategies that Sun Tzu suggested to the emperor in order to um, overcome uh, an enemy on the battlefield. Now, there, these 36 strategies obviously don't need to be deployed all at once. You look at the situation and then uh, depending on the situation, you deploy the one strategy that is most suitable. Now, in, a, in our personal context, in order to check which strategy is most suitable, not just for the situation, but for us personally, we also look at our Baza chart. Because depending what our Baza chart shows, what kind of animal signs we have in our Baza chart, some of the strategies resonate more with us and we feel a bigger affinity with them. And that in turn then helps us implement them easier, faster and more effortlessly. Now, first things first, you need to plot your Baza chart. So you go to this link or you can also find the link in the notes to this video. Um, enter your date and time of birth. Now, if you don't have the time of birth, it is, is not necessary for this particular exercise. Of course, we prefer to have it, but it's not mission critical. Yeah. So just uh, use the information that you have, plot your Baza chart and you will see something like this. And um, in this particular chart, you then focus on this lower part, uh, which is what we call the branches or the earthly branches. Now, you will see here you are born in a particular year, month, day and hour. And each one of those four components is associated with an earthly branch or an animal sign. Now, for those of you who are new to Baza, you may think that you just have an animal sign that is associated with your year. But actually, uh, your month of birth, day of birth and the hour of birth is also associated with a particular animal sign. And these animal signs tell us what or which one of the strategies are best suited for us or we find easiest to implement. So take note of the animal signs that you have. Some of you may have four completely different ones, like here in this particular example where you have tiger, rooster, pig, and horse. But for some of you, you may have duplicated um, animal signs. Some of you may have four identical ones. It happens rarely, but it does happen. So just take note of the ones that you have there. And then we continue with strategy number 22. And this is called shut the door to catch the thief. Now, the ones who resonate most with this particular strategy are all those who have the rabbit and or the dragon in your Baza chart. So if you have either one of them in your chart or both, even better, then this is a strategy that is fairly easy for you to implement. You probably have used this before without even noticing. And uh, this is one that you have biggest affinity with. So it's really, really easy for you to implement it. Now, what does this actually mean? Um, the, even though the, the, the strategy itself is called shut the door to trap the thief, uh, we're not, the thief is, uh, we're not really trapping a thief. So in this particular context, the thief is actually our clients, our customers. 
Yeah, so you will want to you want to shut or trap your clients so they don't go anywhere else. If you're a business owner, you don't want your clients to go anywhere else but you. You want them to just buy your product, your service, and therefore you need to shut the door and trap them like a thief. Yeah, doesn't mean that your clients are actual thieves. You just want to trap them so they don't escape and go uh, head over to your competition. Now, um, basically... What this means is that you need to gather um, gather up clients and customers and continuously engage them. Like you need to have a marketing funnel and use social media. Like when they go onto your website, immediately they're required to, um, let's say, enter their, their email address. And then you can send newsletters and you can send uh, promotion emails to them. So you always make sure that you keep them continuously engaged. Uh, you need to kind of bring them over into your uh, into your territory uh, so that they don't even have the time to look at anybody else. Now, obviously, you uh, the aim is here to hook them on your service. So in order to do that, you constantly need to reinvent yourself. You need to add value. Once they have um, bought a particular service, you then add something else that they can only get from you um, or you get uh, you add a service that um, increases their happiness with the service itself. It's not really something that um, adds particular technical value, for example. It just makes them happy or you get a freebie with it. Yeah, so these are the kind of methods that you need to use to continuously sort of engage them, that they can't even look at anything else. Now, you can also use this, uh, for example, if you just, if let's say you advertise on Facebook and then from Facebook, from a regular page, you move your clients into a closed Facebook group. And then from there, you move them into a Zoom class. Yeah. And the Zoom class is a closed event where you basically trap them. Yeah. So they take the class there rather than on an open platform. So offer significant added value to keep your clients engaged or offer value that is only available with you. Yeah, so Apple does this very, very well. Um, there are certain things, like once you buy one of their products, you kind of have to buy everything else and the gadgets that come with it are not compatible with anybody else. So you sort of, you're trapped, yeah? And you get to the point where it would be far more difficult to switch to someone else than to just keep on, uh, buying Apple products. So that's a classic example of this, right? So you need to check if you have either the rabbit or the dragon in your Baza chart, uh, what it is that you have to offer that you're selling products wise or service wise and how you can shut that door to trap the clients. All right. So I hope this helped. If you have any questions, any comments, please let me know in the comment section below or get in touch with me directly. My contact details are in the notes to this video. And um, if you've enjoyed this video, please like it, share it with other people and subscribe to my channel. You would really, really help me out. Thank you so much. See you soon.